Going to the cinema was a very, very different experience in the 1950s and 60s than it is today. Other than the obvious differences in the way that films were made or presented, for example, like how not every film was available in every theatre nationwide and had to go on tour, the cinema experience was also just generally more fun. Gimmicks were used as a serious way to convince audiences that their experience was going to be unique and worth leaving their houses and brand new home television sets for. Perhaps no other filmmaker embodied this idea of having fun at the cinema better than William Castle. Born William Schloss Jr. in 1914, the soon-to-be-known William Castle grew up surrounded by the theatre. When he was 13, a new sensation was taking over stages in New York City, Dracula, starring the strangely alluring Bela Lugosi. After seeing it once, the young William Castle became obsessed, and according to Castle himself, this is where he had a major realisation. Quote, I knew what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to scare the pants of America. End quote. At age 15, Castle met his hero, Bela Lugosi, who managed to get Castle a job as the assistant stage manager of Dracula when it went on tour around the country. After making a good deal of money from this, Castle decided to take a huge gambit and rented out the Stony Creek Theatre in Connecticut, and hired German actor Ellen Schwaness, who was a big name amongst German speakers at the time, to act in his adaptation of a German play. Das ist nicht für Kinder. This is not for children. However, there was only one small problem. This wasn't a real play. It was one that Castle had made up in order to be able to legally hire a big-name actor, who in this case was Ellen Schwaness. The script was only finished by Castle himself two days before the performance. As a way of gaining attention for his new play, Castle sent a copy of a telegram he had supposedly sent to the German government, turning down the request for him to release Ellen Schwaness from her contract so they could hire her for a play in Munich. He was then able to market his play as starring the star who said no to Hitler. After a few years working successfully as a stage producer and director, Castle decided to move west to Hollywood, California. Here he met and befriended Harry Cohn, and soon found work at Columbia Pictures directing low-budget B-movies. While directing such films as The Chance of a Lifetime and several films in the Whistler series amongst dozens of other low-budget films, he also gained a lot of experience with producing, perhaps most noticeably working as an associate producer on his friend's, Orson Welles, 1947 thriller, The Lady from Shanghai. After working for Columbia Pictures for several years, Castle realised he wasn't directing the films he wanted to make, and wasn't any closer to his aim of scaring the pants off America. So he decided to strike out on his own and make his own independent low-budget B-movies. It was at this point in his career that we see all the skills that he learned come into full force. His unique style of sensationalist marketing, his ability to direct and produce films extremely cheaply and quickly, and perhaps most noticeably, his eye for theatrics. It was this application of his theatrics that really helped sell his films, making them stand out and truly be a unique experience for the audiences that would flock to see his films. Here's some examples of my favourite gimmicks, ones that I feel really capture the goofy and exciting nature of what Castle offered alongside with his films. During screenings of House on Haunted Hill from 1959, near the climax of the film, the scene which contains the now iconic image of a skeleton rising from a vat of acid, a prop skeleton with red glowing eyes would be hung down from the ceiling of the cinema, and would float above the audience. Castle, with his tenacity for coming up with marketable ideas and names, called this experience Emergo. During screenings of 1959's The Tingler, Castle subjected his audience to what he called Percepto, or simply put, vibrating chairs, which would simulate the feeling of one of the film's monsters, the eponymous Tinglers, climbing up an audience member's back where in a truly fourth wall-breaking moment, one of the tinglers supposedly escapes the film and starts attacking the audience. To heighten the tension during this moment of the film, Vincent Price's character would look into the camera and tell the audience to Do not panic, but scream! Scream for your lives! Perhaps the most impactful of Castle's gimmicks, however, was the one he used for 1961's Homicidal. Once again, the gimmick would be implemented near the ending of the screening. Just as the film reached its most suspenseful point, the film stopped in order to give the audience a fright break, a period of about 45 seconds in which any audience member could leave the screening and get a full refund, if they admitted they were too scared to finish the film. The idea of this fear break was used heavily in the marketing of the film, and furthermore, 
This idea of warning the audience of how scary a film is became an extremely popular idea in the coming decades, with notable examples of this being Alfred Hitchcock's marketing of Psycho and in the marketing of Wes Craven's Last House on the Left. Despite gaining a name for himself by using these gimmicks, Castle's career eventually took a downturn, as many of his investors, and indeed many of the cinemas in which he implemented these gimmicks, began asking him to stop incorporating so many of these gimmicks into his films. Despite this, Castle still had a number of successes under his belt after this, with the most prominent example being Rosemary's Baby, which he bought the adaptation rights to even before the original book had come out. The legacy of William Castle is a long-reaching one, with him being a major influence for famous filmmakers such as Robert Zemeckis and John Waters. His directing and marketing style pushed his films beyond being simple, cheesy B-movies into being fun, spooky, full-on events, and still to this day reminds us that it's okay to have horror that's also fun. So please remember to have a spooky, but also fun, Halloween. Hey, we hope you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to like and subscribe. We upload videos every Friday. See you soon.